My name is Steve and I'm the Safety and Compliance Manager at Team RV Express, an RV transport company located in northern Indiana. We transport RVs from the various manufacturers in our area to dealerships all across North America. The allure of transporting RVs with your own personal pickup truck attracts many drivers to the industry. Since CDLs are typically not required, many newcomers don't know how to keep a logbook because they've never been a commercial driver before. We've produced this video to give you an idea of what is involved. It is not intended to be everything you've ever needed to know about logging, but it is intended to give you enough information to keep you from being put out of service by the DOT. If you're considering joining our team as a driver, you can be confident that we will give you as much personal information as you need prior to leaving with the your Federal first year. Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, or FMCSA, is a regulatory body inside the United States Department of Transportation, or DOT. The FMCSA governs the entire U.S. commercial trucking industry, and RV transporting falls within that jurisdiction. In Canada, the Ministry of Transportation sets the laws that govern trucking. There are seven categories in which the governing bodies score trucking companies for safety, and these are referred to as the seven basics. The category that applies to logging is hours of service. So far, so good. We've taken a very complex bit of bureaucracy and narrowed it down to one manageable area called hours of service. Let's look at the basic few laws of hours of service that make or break a logbook page when you're going through a roadside inspection by a DOT officer. U.S. laws state that you're allowed no more than 11 hours of driving time in any 14-hour period. You're allowed no more than 14 hours of on-duty working time in a 24-hour period. And you're allowed no more than 70 hours of working time in an eight-day period. Canadian laws state that you're allowed no more than 13 hours driving time in a 16-hour period and no more than 16 hours of working time in a 24-hour period. If you abide by those basic rules and if you do not falsify or lie on your logs, you will not be placed out of service. But what does that all mean when you're actually writing in your logbook? Let's log a couple of days and I'll explain as we go. We'll use a two-day, 1,300-mile trip that we use during our orientations. You'll notice that our company name, as well as main office address and home terminal address are pre-printed on our logs. Because we're based in Middlebury, Indiana, all of our drivers must always log Eastern Standard Time, no matter what time zone they're in at any specific time. First, let's look at our graph. The first grid is off-duty. That's just what you'd think. Time spent not working is off-duty. Next is sleeper berth time. Most drivers using a pickup truck do not have a sleeper berth, so that grid will generally be left blank. You could have a sleeper berth installed in your pickup, but until you do, just log off-duty if you're sleeping or resting in your truck, which is perfectly legal. The third grid is driving. Again, that's just what you would expect. If you're driving the truck, you log that time. The fourth and final grid is on duty, not driving. That time is reserved for everything else. You could be doing a pre-trip inspection, getting fuel, loading your truck, waiting for a load, or any number of other things. That's considered on duty, not driving. Okay, let's go to Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. The first thing you'll want to do is insert your date on your log. Next, you'll want to make sure you note your truck's license plate and transporter plate number in the appropriate box. Then you'll insert your bill of lading or manifest number. Starting off our day, we were off duty while we slept in our truck until 6 a.m. when we came on duty not driving for 30 minutes. We made note of the city and state or province that we were in, which was Middlebury, Indiana, and did a pre-trip inspection while we hooked up to our unit. At 6.30 we began driving and didn't stop again until 11 in the morning. At 11 we stopped in Albion, Wisconsin to get fuel, which took a half an hour, and we then went up off duty to get in our required break of at least 30 minutes. At 12.30 we began driving again and made note of our break on the previous line. From 12.30 until 7 in the evening, we drove. At that time, we stopped for rest in West Union, Minnesota. We then went off duty for the rest of the night to get our required 10 hours of rest in. 
Now we're going to total our hours for each duty status. Our off-duty time we spent from midnight until 6 a.m., so six hours there, plus one hour for our break puts us at seven. And then we have eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 hours spent off duty. So we make note of that in the total hours line. We don't have anything in the sleeper berth as we don't have a sleeper berth installed in our pickup truck. Next is driving time. From 6.30 to 7 is 30 minutes or half an hour plus one, two, three, four, so that's four and a half hours driving. Another half puts us at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven hours. So we make note of that as well. Our time spent on duty not driving is thirty minutes and thirty minutes for one hour. Our hours must total up to twenty four as there are twenty four hours in each day. So twelve plus 11 is 23, plus 1 is 24. We then note the amount of miles that we drove for the day and insert our signature to make the log a legal document. The next day starts out the same with the date, truck's license plate and transporter plate number, and bill of lading number listed. We were off duty until 6 in the morning when we came on duty not driving for 15 minutes in West Union, Minnesota while we performed our pre-trip inspection. At 6.15 we began driving and stopped at 9 in the morning in Valley City, North Dakota to go through the scales. That took 30 minutes before we began driving again. We drove until 1 in the afternoon when we took our required off-duty break of at least 30 minutes in Velva, North Dakota. At 1.30 in the afternoon, we again began driving until 3 when we stopped in Portal, North Dakota for fuel and to cross the border. At 3.15, we were back on the road until 6.30 when we reached our destination in Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. Delivery took 30 minutes, so at 7 in the evening, we went off duty for the rest of the night before we headed back home. Now we total up our hours again, make sure they equal 24 insert our mileage for the day, and finally, our signature. If you find yourself pulled in for a DOT inspection, stay calm. Team RV pays you for passing inspections with no violations. Comply with the officer's requests and give us a call as soon as it's over as we will need a copy of the paperwork that you receive. If you're put out of service, don't panic. Call the safety department and let us know. We'll need any and all information pertaining to the stop and the violations you received. Serve your mandatory time off and get back on the road as soon as you can. Anytime that you feel you need more information or a refresher course, you can call, email, or stop in the office for as much assistance as you need.